Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I will be talking about I2C. I2C inter inter-integrated circuit is a form of serial communication protocol with discussed Ethernet and UART and SPI. So I2C is no different from them. You can get the full tutorial, the introduction and the explanation at projectfpga.com slash i2c i'll put the link in the description for the full tutorial in this video i'll be talking about the Velo code also using which i'll be describing using this logisim circuit but go to the site you see the definition of i2c is bi-directional half duplex so then so also you, you can see the what it looks like it has the master and slave it also supports multiple slaves also likewise then i'll be talking about all these explanations in this tutorial you can read it up from the website but i'll be explaining the velo code which i have at the end of this lesson but before that let me emphasize on this so this is the velo code actually let me open it a new tab then you can see this also how i2c works everything briefly explained at the website so this is the velo code i'll be explaining in this tutorial it has four modules i'll be explaining them in this tutorial using my logic sim circuit as usual but it's quite lengthy but i'll do my best to make them very very explanatory in this tutorial so then this is so to understand this more you can actually watch this video on youtube by foolish engineer find foolish engineer on youtube watch this is videos these three videos are actually about i2c one, one, one reason I recommend these videos is is actually animated and quite very explanatory. I enjoyed watching them. Check Foolish Engineer on YouTube and watch his three I2C videos. He talks about how it works, the framing and arbitration. But before we dive into this very long tutorial, I would like to explain a little misconception about I2C. One when you are learning about i2c we are told that it, it consists of two lines the sda and sc scl one the clock and the data line that's true but in design the internal design is what i2c looks like it's not actually just two wires internally this is what i2 looks like i2c looks like it's actually four wires why is it four wires because remember we said is bi-directional so one input one output together makes one so the SCL consists of two lines the SDA consists of two lines so while we're going through the velo code you'll be hearing about SCL out and SCL in just know that is the this is the in the one going in and this is the out the one going out the same for the SDA as well as the SCL, they are bi-directional. So one goes in, the other goes out. The one that goes out is actually used to switch this, let me call it a MOSFET. So when you go through the theory explanation, you understand that uh, it is an open drain, open drain connection. So it's very explanatory. I did my best to explain it is open drain that is the line is always high and the out the out that is these lines are used to turn it off and on in the process either either generating the clock or sending the data both the SD and the SCL line in the master and both the master and the slave are, are bi direction and they have two lens of wires so while, while we're going through the code you'll be seeing SL out SL in SDA in SDA out 
so these are the four lines we are talking about so this acts more like a feedback it just takes them in while the output does the switching so turn on you really need to understand the what it means to be open drain so when you go through my explanation at projectfpj.com slash i2c and you're still having issues understanding this you can watch a uh, foolish engineer on youtube the i2c videos they are very very nice and explanatory so i will go over here let me show you the four models we have one we have the counter so this is what the counter looks like and what you see let me show you what the counter looks like so this is it, the counter and what you see so it's basically just for counting it counts how many bits so this is how it works it has ram 8 if you've been going through my tutorial you understand what i mean by ram 8 this is ram 8 here yeah. it's just eight flip flops in series empire in and out so this counter is eight bits of ram so well, let me turn it on and simulate it so you see what it does so when i'm clocking this i need to turn on the enable bit on so that i'll be able to increment you can see it's incrementing so that is basically what this counter subsecute does this is the reset or resetting it and is the lo load bit actually loads loads a uh, eight bits of zeros to it that is you have to load it before you start counting so it's more like a secondary reset for it but this asynchronous reset is the general reset of the whole circuit so but if you like to start using it to count you can use just the load to reset it and then on the next clock post you start the enable you enable counting so that you can start counting from one so that is basically what it does so watch me clock it so if i don't turn on the enable bit it's not going to clock it's going to be muted so while we are going through the tutorial you're going to see how we use these counters for so another sub circuit yeah this is the counter so now another sub circuit is the shift so let me show you what the shift looks like the shift sub circuit so this is more like a a parallel to a serial to parallel converter so once the bits are coming in is Packing them together in groups of eight bits. So then let's let's explain this. So you see, so uh, as usual, we have the RAM eight also just to store eight bits of RAM. So this here out actually takes this here in and goes out to this here out. Now let's see what it does. Now I'm clocking it. I'm clocking it. Nothing is happening because this here what I have here is a zero. So let me have a one here. Let me clock it again. What is happening? Let me turn this shift enable on and watch. Can you watch that the bits are moving in? And you see, you see how it has taken it also. Just like we have in the previous tutorial, you can use the load to load zeros, group of zeros or a different data into it so let me load it with zero clock it you can see it's back to zero it likewise has the usual the normal async reset for resetting it also then this year in will be going out into this data out watch again so let me make it zero and vary the bit so you see so that is basically what the shape does it takes the bits coming in and assembles them in groups of eight and outputs them so that's what the shift does so then we have our the let's talk about this main controller interface okay now let's talk about the core okay so first of all let's talk about the state machine that we'll be using for this circuit so this is what the state machine looks like from the name is called SCL main state so this state machine 
serves for both the master or the slave it's quite the same thing so how does it work now I'm hoping you have an understanding of logicing so I won't be explaining much here so this is another RAM RAM tray that means it's just a 3 bit of RAM it stores just 3 bit of RAM this is the output to detect the state so when the state is 0, 0, 0 is the idle state the idle state so I'm using this multiplexer here to switch between states this multiplexer here switches between states so this this is a reset this multiplexer is used to for call reset when you go to the code you are going to see the call reset to reset the state machine it sets it back down to the idle state which is state is zero so if not this is the main multiplexer that goes that switches the state so for state zero that is when we are in the idle state let's see what happens within this idle state so there's a bit called detect start and detect stop remember the when we are going to the explanation we have this start condition and the stop condition when you are going through the definition explanation you have the start condition and okay let me show you here mm. yes this is it the start condition and the stop condition this is on the website so the this the detect stop detects the stop condition while the detect start detects the start condition i'm going to show you how these bits are being generated but for now let's talk about the state machine so whenever first of all now watch this see what turns this multiplexer on that is the detect start so whenever the detect start signal comes on and we are in state zero one is going to fed in we're going to move it to state one if not if the detect stop comes on we are going to go to state zero that is we are going to stay back in our normal state state zero so that is to say once we detect the initial condition that is one sorry the initial condition is detect start once the signal comes on move to state one so we are going to show you how the detect starts and the desktop is being generated in another in another file so once it's detected we move to state one so this is state one here i remember after sending the after sending the start condition it starts the master starts sending the address bit the slave address bit so then again these two multiplexers here are what we use in state one and state one comes on after we've detected the initial start condition so for this multiplexer what turns this on is the detect stop remember once the test stop comes here it goes back to state zero and we are encountering state one so let's see what is going to take it to this state two there's this signal that comes here let me let's see where the signal comes from let me highlight it let's go down let's follow this signal down to here so this is what turns the signal on when the big count is equal to seven remember i told you about the counter earlier ago so we have a counter that counts so whenever it counts up to seven move to state two and counting up to state seven means that the master has sent or the slave has received up to seven bits that is on the next post move that is sending the slave address so remember this state machine is both for the master or the slave so when it counts up to seven it means the master has either sent seven bits or the slave has received seven bits therefore move to state two so when it gets to state two 
and these are still two here so rather let me highlight it this is state two so these two multiplexers here are just are being controlled from the still from the detect start and the test stop that is if it still has a detect stop move to zero if it detects that again move to one but if not let's see what this what happens here what happens within this particular area so this bit so when you are going to develop code, there are a lot of bits we have to learn what they do let me highlight this let's see what bit it is so you can see what it is the master slave input so this this bit whenever is one it means that the i2c bus is operating as a master when it's zero it means it's operating as a slave so now it's giving two conditions for us two conditions when is when is one that is operating as a master do this when is it when is operating as a slave that is when is zero do this so let's see the conditions it gave let's first of all talk talk about when it's operating as a slave this is this so remember that when it was in state two it already sent seven bits that is a slave address so what it does is it checks the last bit after the seven seven bits the last one remember when, 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 when we went through when you read through the website remember that the seven bits holds the slave address and the last bit which is the eight bits holds whether is a write operation or a read operation so this is a splitter here let me touch it no I want to show you the splitter this is, a, this is a splitter here this is a splitter here and please I hope you know how to use Logisim so that you won't be confusing let's look come over here I want to show you something this place you can see that it selects only B0 the rest of the bits are off that is bit 0 contains the read or write bit when it's one is a write operation when it's zero is a read operation so once the slave receives this first eight bits it stores them in the address bus now the last bit b0 is used to show whether it's a read or a write operation so this is it one once it's one it goes to state four state four is for transmitting that is writing operation and then state 3 is for read reading operation so that this is what happens when is a slave now when is a master remember is going to do this so this signal actually this master read write means when is on it means when is one it means the master is reading and when is you it means the master is writing so whenever it comes here as usual 3 means reading for me is writing so when you go through the variable code you are going to understand this remember we're talking about the call this is what we are talking about here the ms call not talking about this not this is the processor no not the processor interface we are talk, actually talking about the call so this is it this is the call this is what we are talking about the call so so now this is state three this is state three and this is state four state four state three is is for state three is for read operation state four is for write operation so now again it says when you guess remember this signal here I've highlighted the so let's go back to what it means. So this is it once more. Usually the bit count starts counting up to seven again. So whenever it counts up to seven again, move to state five. 
if he counts up to seven and is that is if he is receiving and counts up to seven move to state five and if he's reading and counts up to seven move to state six so these two are for usual when a detect stop or a detect start occurs again so i won't be talking about them again so So now let me remove this. Now this is state five and six. So whenever it comes to state five, it receives an acknowledge. It goes back to state three. Here, when it gets to state six, it receives an acknowledge. It goes back to four. If not, it has a detect stop, and then they go back to zero. So this is how the men state machine of course this state machine is used whether they are master or slave so we call it the scl main state scl main state please go to the code you understand all this it's very easy then again you have this scl state scl state we use this state machine scl state whenever whenever the state machine is operating just as a slave sorry as a master whenever the i2c is operating as a master is when we use this state machine but the first state machine we talked about is when the when it's operating as both a master or a slave so initially state zero for us to start that is to move to state one these conditions must be available so one means that this master slave must be one i told you when master slave is one it means he's operating as a master so that is the main and initial condition it must be a master so as i told you this estate works only when it's operating as a master so bb means boss busy so for it to move to state one it means boss must not be busy that is negative negated it must not be busy if it's busy means it's already in operation so for it to start going from zero to one it means the boss must be idle initially and there is a gen start signal that is the start of the transmission i'm going to show you how this gen start is generated in another tutorial so then it moves so if these three conditions are met move to state one so in state one we have this prescarriage and the clock count this clock count uses the counter also so i'm going to show you later that the counter model i showed you before we are going to use two of it one for the bit count which is this big count and the other for the clock count so this prescarriage is like the prescare register is used to scale the i2c when you go to the data sheet you see it so whenever what whatever you set in this prescarriage is equal to the clock count move over to state two and once you enter state two move over to state three so in state three a lot of conditions are here here we consider the interrupt and interrupt enable so i want to really explain much here the, this video is long already it has gone up to 23 minutes so i think i'll cut this video here in the next video we are going to talk about how most of this bits have been generated thank you